I'm keen to say that this remains a missing person inquiry at this stage. I'm also satisfied at the moment, based on the evidence that we have, that Gaynor did not meet anybody on the way to the park, and we now have a better understanding of her movements through the city centre. But I would reiterate at this stage that there is no evidence of third party I involvement. Hello and welcome to True Crime Rocket Science, the most authentic voice in true crime. Well, that was the voice of Chief Superintendent Dave Buckley addressing the media not long ago. The address was very brief, barely a minute, and didn't really contain much of substance. The fact that Buckley has stressed they are still considering this a missing person case, even after that, that missing person has been found, that is another way of saying they don't consider it a criminal or homicide investigation. That is the legal status that is being addressed through that statement, pending, of course, the results of a post-mortem or autopsy. Buckley confirmed the theory many have had all along of no third-party involvement, and that's significant because one, involve, one imagines even prior to an autopsy, it would be plainly obvious if there were, for example, blunt force trauma injuries or some kind of obvious injury. Now, in this brief analysis, I want to address four things. Number one, the location of the body in terms of on the river. The time of the incident. Three, comparisons to Nicola Bully. And four, the psychology of the incident. And in this third area, I, I want to change a prior statement I made and basically fine-tune it slightly. So let's start with location. It may seem subtle from this view, but the body was found on what appears to be a slight turn, a slight bend in the river, and on the far side, the side where the river would be flowing more strongly, right? And that is really important, and I think an area that is underestimated, the aquadynamics, the way the water is flowing, certainly when it is flowing rapidly. And one must try to imagine the water flowing rapidly given the rainfall conditions of this particular river. It's a, it's a living thing in a way. It's a, it's a moving, active, fluid, changing thing. It's not the same as a crime on land. And so one's got to intuit the flood conditions. One's got to imagine how the water is churning beneath the surface to imagine where the body might have moved by the force of the water. Nicola's body was also found near to the bank, close to or on a turn. There was also quite a lot of overhanging vegetation in the area. So what is the lesson in terms of the location? Well, that it's more likely to find a body closer to the river's edge than in the center. The next thing I want to deal with is time. I've been turning over in my mind the twin factors of time. First, that Gaynor leaves work early and seems to be in a rush. And then second, that she then seems to be very uh, casual. She's walking quite casually, looking up to the side of her, and, and she doesn't seem to be in a rush at that point. And she arrives at the park after dark when it was more likely to be deserted. Was that not the plan all along? And then she also apparently went to a restroom immediately prior to going to the park. What did she do there? I'll come back to the relevance of this in number four when we revisit the psychology. Now on to Nicola Bully. Please tell me in what ways is this case different from Nicola Bully? Seriously. How is this case different to Nicola Bully? Gaynor didn't scream. Nicola didn't scream. Gaynor's phone was left behind. Nicola's phone was left behind. Both incidents happened in a park. Did Gaynor take, in a way, a leaf out of Nicola's book? Did, did she get this idea from Nicola Bully? Was the idea that the water would conceal the body from loved ones and if found, it would be by law enforcement, and it would be, in that sense, private and discreet. The similarities really are quite staggering. You know, both of them happened on a Friday. 
If anything, we know more about Nicola Bully's mental health difficulties, her struggles with alcohol. And, you know, by saying that, law enforcement got into a lot of trouble. Also, the welfare check 10 days earlier. Then we know a lot more about Nicola Bully's mental health than we do Gaynor's. So why is there so much more certainty that Gaynor's situation was related to mental health? Because doesn't it seem that way? Doesn't it seem that people have, there's a, a kind of a consensus that what she was doing was out of character, that even by her own admission she said she was feeling a bit off? I think in the gap of the unknown, when no one could understand why Nicola's body couldn't be found, you know, if it was in the river, why can't they find it? So it can't be in the river. And so from there, people jump to simple, easy, but wrong conclusions. When we can't get a quick answer, we want a simple solution that is almost like a cliche. But sometimes the reason we can't find an answer is because of human limits, that we're not very good at searching in water. Now, Talking about and figuring out someone's true interiority is one of the toughest areas in true crime. What is someone's motive? What are the true motives here? And many can't, don't, or won't. And it's understandable, especially in a case like this, because it's triggering. It's kind of a downer. I think it's important that we do, that we, we try to be brave and, and figure out what happened here, what is the thought process, and how you know, circumstances and the situation and context led to someone going on, on a sort of perhaps a psychological downward spiral or perhaps something else happened. And what could be the solution to preventing that? How, well, how about reaching out to someone? How about people who are, are sensitive enough to say, are you okay? Why are you talking about anxiety? Let, tell me a little bit more about how you're feeling or whatever it is. We also know both women lost their lives very close to that sometimes tricky hinge of time when everyone is supposed to be happy, when families are supposed to be merry, you know, that time, the festive season, Christmas and New Year. We seem to know how to be happy and to pretend to be happy, but do we know how to be sad and to deal with other people around us who aren't very happy when they are supposed to be? What if it's the festive season and you're not feeling very festive? How do you tell someone about it? Who do you tell? And that brings us to psychology. In a previous analysis, I suggested that the visit to the park was not premeditated. In other words, when Gaynor left, and by the way, this is quite important, she was working at the Bullard's gin counter. She was selling alcohol. And so one does wonder, was she someone who enjoyed alcohol herself? I, I think it's unavoidable to ask that question. But nevertheless, I, I initially thought, I don't think she went, uh, she planned to go from work to the park when she left work. And that's where I've kind of made a bit of a uh, U-turn. I'm starting to think that that was the plan. But she needed to do something before she got to the park. And she also needed for a certain amount of time to go by for it to get darker so that she could do whatever she could do anonymously. And then, of course, she bumped into the dog walker who wasn't really supposed to be there. It's a park where dogs weren't allowed. And I guess the thinking I had was if Gaynor had gotten hold of her friend Julie, because that's what she did just before she left work, you know, I was thinking things may have taken a different turn. And that's what Julie's been thinking. But if you think about it, she seemed seems very determined in that CCTV footage. She's running, she's dodging traffic, she's trying to get from the city centre to the cathedral. She seem, She seems to know where she's going. And after that, after that kind of relay, after that kind of foot race to the cathedral, after that in, in CCTV footage, she seems very different. She's calmer. She's taking her time in terms of walking, which I think is interesting. So what happened at the cathedral? It's also interesting the timing that she arrives at the park at almost the exact time 
when it's dark and likely to be deserted, was that calculated? Was that something that she intended? And that's why I'm now inclined to believe that um, that may have been the afternoon's itinerary all along, at least when she left the city center running. I'm not going to take it further than that in terms of Gainer, um, certainly for now. I do want to continue this conversation by going beyond the Gainer case and, and far afield to South Korea. I hope you'll join me in courageously joining the final dots in this case. Thank you for listening, and I'll see you guys next time.